This is the iPad mini 5, the brand new iPad mini, and it's it's Apple's revival of their iPad mini lineup, which everyone, including myself, thought to be entirely dead for the past four years. You might have seen our previous videos on the iPad mini 5, my initial thoughts on it two days after I got it, uh, and the full in-depth comparison against the iPad mini 4 from 2015. But this is our final video on the mini 5, the full in-depth review covering my final thoughts on Apple's smallest and most portable tablet. Now that the iPad mini 5 also supports the Apple Pencil, you might want to check out Paperlike, our sponsor for this video. Paperlike makes your iPad's display feel like real paper, so it totally changes the way you use the Apple Pencil on the iPad. Check out the link in the description or use the coupon code ZONE10 for a 10% discount when buying Paperlike. And thanks again Paperlike for being a sponsor of this video. So the iPad mini was actually launched back in 2012, the original one, and it was a very, very unique device. You see, this was actually Apple's first branching of an iOS device. Uh, this this was back when Apple only had one iPhone and one iPad, and in 2012, a year after Steve Jobs' death, the iPad mini was launched. Now, while the iPad mini was indeed developed during Steve's reign, so to say, we do know that he was actually against it. He didn't want to split the lineup into multiple devices, and the iPad mini was actually something that Tim Cook was pushing for, um, as he was the one who wanted users to have more and more options. And if you take a look at Apple's lineup today, they have five different iPad sizes, seven different iPhone models, and many more Macs and Apple Watch models to choose from. And the iPad mini 5 is just another choice. It starts at $400, which is $70 more than the original iPad mini used to cost back in 2012, and the exact same price as the mini 4 from 2015. It is not the cheapest iPad that you can buy, that's actually the entry-level iPad, which yes, it is larger, but it also comes with weaker specs and a significantly worse display. What the iPad mini offers that none of the other iPads do is a very, very compact form factor. In fact, this thing is so compact that I can hold it in one hand, uh, and if you have some fairly larger pockets or hoodie, uh, it would even it would even fit in those. And yes, the iPad mini is also the perfect iPad to carry on a plane or a coach trip. It's an amazingly portable device. My only complaint here is that while it is so portable, the design hasn't changed pretty much at all since 2012 when the first iPad mini was launched. We have the exact same thick bezels as in 2012, which yes, some people might argue that, you know, it's good to have on a tablet because you have something to hold it by, but that's not necessarily true. You see, the iPad Pro 2018, for example, has some insanely thin bezels, and the accidental touch rejection on that thing is so good uh, that you can hold it by the display and still use it, so it's it's crazy. And the iPad mini itself does have some incredible accidental touch rejection as well on the sides. Uh, so when you're using this thing in portrait because of how thin the side bezels are, uh, you would most likely touch the display, but this is not a problem at all. So Apple definitely has the knowledge to make a good accidental touch rejection system, however they've decided to stay with the exact same seven-year-old design with the iPad mini 5. The mini 4 from 2015 did get a bit thinner than the mini 3 from a year before, and it also got a laminated display, uh, but that was that was literally the only design change we ever got in an iPad mini lineup. And the mini 5 retains the small improvements that the mini 4 got, while also adding a darker shade of space gray, which does look really, really nice. It's as dark as on the iPad Pro 2018, and by the way, even darker than the MacBook Pros. So I do like this a lot, and also the edges are not reflective anymore, they're actually matte, but that's basically it. Now, phones have gotten bigger and bigger since 2012, when the iPad mini 1 was launched. Keep in mind that, you know, in 2012 we had the iPhone 5, which had a 4-inch display, and now in 2019 we have the iPhone XS Max, which has a 6.5-inch display, so there's a massive difference in terms of the display size between the two. And I've seen a lot of reviewers and tech websites say that the iPhone XS Max is almost as big as an iPad mini is, and you know, there's no point in getting a mini if you already have an iPhone XS Max which isn't correct at all. You see, the iPad mini has a 4 by 3 aspect ratio display versus 19.5 by 9 on the iPhone XS Max, which means that you can read full-size pages of a book or even a comic book without having to scroll or zoom in on the mini versus the iPhone. So if you're into reading books and pretty much browsing in general, the mini is a significant upgrade from even a large screen smartphone. And speaking of reading, the display itself has been improved significantly over the years. So we got a Red 10 display with a second generation iPad mini, uh, and that laminated display with the iPad mini 4 in 2015, and with the iPad mini 5, everything got even better. The colors are more vibrant with the inclusion of a DCI-P3 panel, so just like the iPad Pros and the MacBook Pros and the latest iMacs and the iPhones, everything just pops. 
and the difference between the 5 and the 4 is definitely noticeable. And the display is also brighter, which I do like a lot, so if you plan on using this outdoors, it can go up to 500 nits now of brightness versus about 350 or so like we had before, so the brightness increase is very noticeable as well. And it's overall a very good display. At 326 ppi, this thing is sharper than all the other iPads which have 264 ppi, and it does have to be that way since the Mini is smaller, so you know, you would be keeping it closer to your eyes. I just wish that the display was also larger because there's so much room left on the top and the bottom that Apple isn't utilizing, so I really hope that the design changes with the next generation. But something that has indeed changed, and I'm really happy with this one, is support for the Apple Pencil. And this is a bit weird because Apple Pencil and the Smart Keyboard, those have been both exclusive to the iPad Pro, as Apple's been selling the iPad Pro as a professional grade device. Now that they added both Apple Pencil and Smart Keyboard support to the iPad Air 2019, full review on that coming soon, by the way. Stay tuned, subscribe notifications. Uh, and the Apple Pencil support has been added to the Mini, no Smart Keyboard, unfortunately, on the Mini. It seems like Apple's clearly moving away from the idea that the only iPads that should have Pro features is the iPad Pro. Even though this isn't the second generation Apple Pencil that the iPad Pro comes with, it's still the first gen one, which connects very weirdly, it's still an amazing thing to have. You do have to buy it separately, and yes, it does feel weird using the Apple Pencil on such a small display, especially considering that the pencil itself is bigger than the entire length of the display. But it is perfect for taking uh, notes and writing down some ideas quickly, and if you really want to, you can indeed use it to draw some professional art, even though I wouldn't recommend it at all without using Paperlike, our sponsor for this video. Paperlike is a screen protector that you apply to your iPad, and it makes the entire experience of using the Apple Pencil on your iPad feel like real paper, instead of that slippery glass feel that you normally have. So you get much more resistance and feedback in everything you do, which is especially useful in apps such as Procreate or Affinity Photo, or for taking notes, this is honestly a great thing to have. Plus, it also sounds like real paper whenever you're drawing or writing on it. Paperlike also offers 100% money back guarantees, so give it a try and see if it's something for you. And if you use the link in the description or the coupon code ZONE10, you also get a 10% discount. And we've also teamed up with Paperlike to give away not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but actually six Paperlikes. So just follow us both on Instagram at Zone of Tech and Paperlike and leave a comment on this post on our Zone of Tech Instagram page saying why do you want to win a Paperlike for your iPad and the winners would be announced on June the 15th. And thanks again to Paperlike for being a sponsor of this video. Now, in terms of the iPad Mini 5's performance and fluidity, every single iPad Mini came with the same processor that the iPhone came with a year before. So the iPad Mini 1 released in 2012 came with the A5 CPU, the Apple A5, same as in the iPhone 4S from 2011 and so on. But a Mini 5, instead of coming with the Apple A11 from the iPhone 10, it actually comes with the Apple A12 from the iPhone XS. And the performance on this thing is incredible. So everything is battery smooth. It's probably even more powerful than your own laptop, to be honest. And the great thing about having this much power in such a small tablet is that this thing is literally the perfect portable gaming console. iOS games are not only the best ones on any mobile platform in terms of graphics and how well they run on all the devices, but on the iPad Mini 5, for example, thanks to the power of the A12, you can play games such as Fortnite in native resolution at high settings in 60 frames per second and you can even attach a controller and turn this thing into a portable Nintendo Switch. And while you can do video editing on this, yes, even 4K video editing, which is crazy, I wouldn't really recommend it because of how small the display is, uh, but the idea is that this thing, whatever you want to throw at it, this thing will easily handle it. And the camera is pretty good as well, for an iPad mini that is. It's nowhere near the capabilities of the iPad Pro's camera, but the front camera is now a 7 megapixel sensor from the horrible 1.2 megapixel one that we had with the Mini 4, so, you know, selfies and FaceTime calls would look better, sharper and brighter. The back camera isn't that great, it's an old 8 megapixel sensor from a few iPhone generations ago, it seems like the iPhone 5, by looking at the specs, um, and it can only do 1080p video, but the Apple A12 processor does make a pretty big difference in terms of image processing, so if you take a look at how the Mini 4 looked like, um, and this is how the Mini 5 looks like, There, there's actually some, some improvement there. Even though the module itself is the same. But you know, you won't be using this thing for taking regular photos, but for scanning documents and this kind of stuff, it's more than good enough. Now, in terms of how well iOS runs on this, 
it's still iOS, so you're very limited in terms of the functionality. Uh, but since the iPad mini runs on the iPad UI rather than the iPhone UI, you can actually run multiple apps at the same time. Up to three apps now, thanks to having three gigabytes of RAM. So one gig for each app. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. And Apple does offer you years of day one updates. By the way, the screen orientation is unlocked, so this is glitched. Very awesome, Apple. But yeah, leaving glitches like this aside, uh, Apple does offer you years of day one updates. For example, the iPad Air from 2014 uh, is still fully supported five years after it was launched. So expect to be able to use this thing for many, many years. Please rotate. Come on. <laughs> And iOS 13 would be coming with some major iPad UI overhaul, and I'm 100% sure that some of those, if not all of those features, would be coming to the Mini 5 as well. Even with iOS 12, we got full gesture support, just like on the 2018 iPad Pro, so even if the home button is still there on the Mini 5, which yes, it's a clickable one that Apple hasn't even used in iPhones since 2015. So yeah, you can indeed use the same gestures as on the 2018 iPad Pro and fully navigate the UI, which, which is great. Okay, so in the end, while personally I do use my iPad Pro every single day, so no, I would not be switching to a mini anytime soon. Uh, the iPad mini 5 is not only the best entry into the iOS ecosystem at the moment, but it is also the best small four-factor tablet on the market by a long, long margin. There's absolutely nothing that even comes close in terms of the performance, the massive app selection, the software support, and the best mobile gaming experience on the market right now, especially if you connect a controller. Full links in the description for the lowest price of the iPad mini 5, the Apple Pencil, and the best gaming controller that you can get for iOS. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, do subscribe notifications for more in-depth tech videos like this one. Hopefully this was pretty in-depth and you guys enjoyed it. This was my full review of the iPad mini 5 and stay tuned for more cool tech videos in the future. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's enough tech, signing out. Cheers.